Good day to all of you. You are watching Deep Heaven Counseling. My name is Narendra Selvaratnam, and today we are going to talk about something that is interesting compared to the ones that we were discussing earlier. We have discussed about chatbots. We have discussed about uh, chat GPT and quite a lot of other things of uh, similar nature. But today we are going to talk about something uh, slightly more uh, into literature, aesthetics. So today the topic of discussion is Professor Sanatnanda Siri. Buddhism and also how I was able to connect some of the songs of Professor Sanat Nandasiri with Buddhism and how it was able to get me to think more about my life and my existence in this planet. Okay, so I have uh, some of my notes here, so I'm going to just go through some of these notes so that I could uh, tell you what I think about this and what exactly I felt as I was listening to Professor Sanat Nandasiri's songs. Okay, excuse me if my terminology is not. Uh, indicative of any respect. I do have uh, respect for all of these uh, religious leaders. It's just that uh, when I communicate that to you, it might occur to you that I don't give respect, but no. There's a song called Yasodara. Essentially speaking about uh, the meaning of the song, the song is about how Princess Yasodara was able to help uh, Siddhartha Gautama during this entire time, not this lifetime, but in previous lifetimes as well. But uh, the song also speaks about gaining enlightenment and all of that. So I would encourage all of you to listen to this song. Uh, this song is in Sinhala, so if you understand Sinhala, then that of course would be beneficial. Anyways, so the point is, I am not an expert of Sinhala language or literature, so I am not going to explain the entire meaning of this particular song. But in a nutshell, what I just explained is the meaning of the song. Now, the question is, now all of us know that Lord Buddha renounced the, uh, the ordinary life in his late 20s and he attained enlightenment in his mid-30s. Now, very recently, while I was listening to this song, uh, Yasodhara, which is one of my favorite songs, there was some commentary on YouTube itself where one of the individuals was asking, okay, now Lord Buddha renounced his uh, ordinary life it, uh, at uh, the late 20s but what was happening prior to that why that much of time was there a specific reason why he took that much of time to come to the realization that he has to let go of all of these belongings and uh, because he was a prince an heir to the throne so he could have done a lot of things but why exactly what made him let go of all of this that's the question that we want to discuss today. That's exactly what I want to discuss today as well. So this is, don't worry, this is not about religion. I'm not going to talk about religion. I'm not going to offend any person who follows Buddhism or I'm not going to offend uh, the religion or anything of that nature. This is just me trying to reconcile with a psychological dilemma that I had with myself while I attempted to enjoy and understand Professor Sanatandasiri's song, okay? So, for someone to renounce life from by, by letting go of all these belongings, bonds and all of that, I would like to ask whether that person went through any noticeable psychological disturbance or any torment. Now, I don't know whether there was such torment. I don't know whether that was really the thing. But anyways, that's a question that I was asking. And why am I asking this? Because a usual person who enjoys life might not come to a particular understanding that there is something called impermanence. Prince Siddhartha renounced the usual life because he wanted uh, to take the path towards seeking truth. And upon seeking truth, he understood that nothing is permanent. Okay, So if nothing is permanent, this impermanent nature of things, I wonder whether he had some idea about this even prior to Renunciation. I surely do believe that he had some understanding, which could be an understanding one could get if they had some extraordinary understanding about the society. Because in the modern day, present people, the moment they get money, the moment they get hold of fame and all of that, they get into a different style of living. They, they forget about uh, the usual selves. Sometimes we feel that we are invincible. These things do happen in the modern days. So now, Considering all of these things happened 2,500 years ago, I just have this question, you know, whether he had some understanding that no one else had during this time. Because he had everything that he wanted in his life, but there was something that motivated him to renounce from his usual life and go towards the path of an ascetic and trying to find the truth. 
So what I was able to understand was that Lord Buddha, prior to enlightenment even, had a profound understanding of this impermanence. And why did he understand this? Because see, uh, in, in, in the text that we were reading, it says that Lord Buddha one day saw like four passing sights, the sick person and then the old person and then uh, a dead body and also an ascetic person. So this was one of the key reasons that got him to see the impermanence in life. And I think not just this particular passing sights, but he had a much more in-depth understanding about what life is all about. Maybe when individuals do understand this much of things, they do go through certain psychological dilemmas or torment to reconcile, you know, how exactly they are going to go ahead with this. Because I don't think renunciation is an easy decision that anyone could take. So that requires extraordinary capabilities, motivation, and also a whole lot of other things as well. So such a thing can be done by someone who uh, can be considered with uh, you know, great reverence. That's, that's, that's the point that I was trying to make here. So when, when you go through this particular song now, when I was listening to Professor Sanat Nandasiri's uh, song, it is very clear that he has touched upon certain dystymic uh, or melancholic aspects about living and about Prince Siddhartha's life as well. If you, it is not directly said, but it's implied. Now, there is something that I have seen when I, when I, in my daily profession, when I talk to individuals who have gone through, you know, certain existential crises, I have noticed a similar trend. There are some of the individuals who come to therapy, they do require assistance and they have uh, no way of uh, coping up with the things they are going through. But there is another group of individuals who see the nakedness of the things around them. They see what is happening. They see that this is not important for them. And they see that none of these things are required for them to lead a fulfilling life. But to come to that overall conclusion that this is exactly my life is going to be for the rest of the years is a difficult thing for some people to you know, reconcile with. So some of the clients who come, they do have this profound understanding to life. I think prior to renunciation, Lord Buddha may have had an extraordinary intellect about the society living and generally about our existence as well for him to make such a decision. So uh, the nakedness in life was something I think he was able to perceive during that time. And I think the song actually does some justice in getting us to realize that nakedness in life as well. So in, in some sense, like uh, what Edmund Husserl has said in his transcendental phenomenology about getting things back to themselves, I think Lord Buddha was able to, or Prince Siddhartha was able to see life for what it is. The essence of life was understood during this particular time and that was the reason for him to go on that particular path where he renounced from his uh, usual life and he took the path of a ascetic and uh, he went through you know uh, multiple stages of uh, that ascetic life prior to attaining enlightenment so that's something that i'm not going to talk about here because that has nothing to do with the song so uh, so professor sarath nandasiri in his song named yasodara he sings it in such a way that this latent meaning about the dysthymic elements in our life and then the mundaneness in our daily lives and also the general melancholia that all of us go through uh, in front of a certain existential crisis in our lives. I think all these things are nicely incorporated in his song, which is why I think this song deserves to be considered one of the greatest songs written and produced and sung, you know, this entire time. And at the same time, the, the song elaborates a psychological conflict the person who was on the path to achieve enlightenment had endured. So that particular psychological conflict is also well elaborated in this particular song. So if you listen to that, that is once again nicely elaborated because I don't think enlightenment is like a straight road. It's a rough road, you know, where you have to take yourself through certain conflicts. Letting go is not just letting go now. When we talk to clients, letting go is just letting go of the problem, but this is letting go of desire, greed, wanting, yearning, these kind of things. It's, it's very difficult to let go of those things. So then, of course, the path is of lots of uh, turbulence because to let go of relationships, let go of bonds, 
these are the difficult things so i think this song captures all of those things very well so is it possible for one to let go of deeply rooted bonds that that's a question we should ask from ourselves can we let go no we can't this which is exactly why we are tied to whatever the problems that are happening in this particular existence that is exactly why we have difficulties in our day to day lives psychological disturbance because we have expectations we have you know a lot of things that we want in our life we we need things to get ourselves through a successful life or a well balanced life so those things need to be suspended in the true pursuit of truth which is what i think lord buddha was able to do and that was something the song actually nicely captured so the song captures uh, lord buddha's journey the psychological conflicts but more than that someone who always stood by his side helping him and that's the most revered loftiest woman in the planet of earth which is princess yasodhara so i think this idea was what exactly i wanted to tell here today so the this is something that you guys should definitely listen and i don't know what kind of uh, idea that professor sanat nandesri was intending while he was singing this song but regardless of what he originally may have planned it is very clear to me that the song captures multiple elements to human life multiple elements to aesthetic life and multiple elements about you know love marriage and relationship and all of that within just one particular song it's a funny story actually because when i first started to listen to this song i started listening to it because there's a remade version of this song with some sunflower music and for the beat of it i started to listen to it but the more i started listening to it the more i understood the song is at a different level so i have so much of respect for this song and also for professor sanat nandesiri for uh, giving his voice to such an incredible song and i wanted to make this in english for one particular reason because when we discuss about this kind of philosophical matters the uh, majority of my students and also individuals that i daily associate they don't consider this kind of sinhalese songs and uh, the stories and stuff like that for these philosophical arguments and debates so i think this is something that we should do to get these songs and dive deep into their meanings and understand more about what they were able to show to the entire world so by having these kind of discussions we can understand how uh, the ancient philosophies come to consensus with the contemporary living so we are in 2023 we have all this uh, new technological advancements and all of that but the essence of human is still the same we are human beings and i think the original nature of human beings were captured well or grasped well or embraced well 2000 to 2500 years ago compared to what it is right now we are slowly slipping ourselves away from that essence so i think Uh, even for future generations if we can get these philosophical ideas delivered in a bite sized manner in a chunk down manner those students will be able to understand and appreciate our culture not just the culture they will be able to come into a common ground between the past and the future so the future is very different from what we have learned the future is going to be extremely different it's going really you know it is the development uh, technological development itself is you know growing at an exponential rate so before we go to that kind of extraordinary lens i think it is very important that we get our students to understand these things as well so if you are a therapist if you are a student who is learning psychology or social sciences humanities or anyone else for that matter i think these are some of the things that we can learn so just to sum up what we learned was the song speaks about uh, psychological conflicts the nakedness of life the path towards enlightenment ascetic life and a great person who stood next to this is uh, so the prince siddhartha uh, during this entire journey there's a lot of things we can learn from this specific song alone so i would encourage you all of you to listen to this song at the same time uh, this is just my commentary 
So I am once again reiterating this particular video is not to harm anyone, offend anyone or to contradict with anyone else's ideas. This is just my personal reflection on the song. Don't take this as the absolute truth. If you know me, you know that I am a big fan of phenomenology. So phenomenology is all about interpretation. So this is just my interpretation. You can't hold my interpretation as the absolute truth. So if you think that I am misleading someone, please don't consider this video as knowledge. No one should consider this video as knowledge because this is my personal interpretation. And I think my personal interpretation can be stated in a platform like this. But this is not to offend. This is not to, you know, harm anybody. This is out of respect and reverence. So that's the only thing that I wanted to say. But if you have a different understanding or different read about this particular song, you may type it out uh, down below as well. So I'm open to your discussion. Once again, that is exactly what I wanted to discuss with all of you today. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for enjoying the videos of Deep Haven Counseling. So if you haven't still subscribed, make sure to subscribe and click on the like button as well. So I will be making videos like this in future as well. So thank you very much for listening to me today. And I will see you again with a similar video in future. So thank you very much.